Welcome, MEBW fans, to the second episode of the Jersey Boys podcast experience. I'm your host, one Cody Powers. With me, I have Jack Delta, Tyler Adams, Matt Thunder, but I also have one other guest, and that is the man who must moonsault, Zach Ryan. <laughs> hey, yo, what is up? Burr, burr, burr. Sorry. I had to make my introduction, but before before we get started, I don't mean to interrupt, but I would just somebody would like to say something. If you don't. Somebody, yes, oh. somebody would like to say something. If you don't mind, uh, hey, uh, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> yes. Is that John? What's going on? It's John. <laughs> That is um, one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my God, they're just multiplying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this party started. Uh, hmm. That's something good to start off on. Oh, I think that's an easy one. What you been up to, Dad? Nothing much, man. Just chilling, you know, doing my thing. Killing it. Um, I've been uh, been working out <clears throat> during quarantine. You know, staying away from the the disease. So, yeah, fuck that disease. Yeah, that's what we've been. Uh, that's what we've been that doing. Ruined, ruined what could have been one of the greatest weeks of our lives. Truly <sighs> fucking tragic. Truly tragic. Very tragic. Very tragic, yes. Much tragedy. Yes, we would have had a good time. Yeah, hell yeah. It's always a good time when we get to kill and do shit. Me and John so much wanted to kick some ass. Oh, so much ass would have been kicked. There was gonna be a tag <laughs> tournament and everything. So much that's ass. gonna be a that's gonna be a trip we're gonna have to reschedule. So oh definitely. Dude, yeah, definitely. Hundred percent. Oh, I wanna do it before the year's over if this illness <laughs> would just go away. New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah, New Year's Eve. Oh, my oh, God. My New Year's? Oh, no. New Year's? Oh, man. I don't know if I'd survive the night. What a splendid idea. Yeah, me neither. I, I Jungle think... Juice is going to make an appearance. <laughs> yeah, Jungle <laughs> Juice is going to fly into the ring. <laughs> Holy shit. You're just going to see a corner with me and Kent Havoc singing Power Rangers theme song while barely conscious. Um... <laughs> Oh, God. I'm sure I'll be doing some stupid shit, falling off something. I don't know, jumping off something. <laughs> Someone's going to get canadian by a teddy bear. Or, you know, praising Kurt Angle. I might be doing that, too. You mean Perk Angle? Yes, Perk Angle. <laughs> Perk Angle. Nobody knows. Nobody knows Perk Angle, man. Perk Angle will fuck you up. Yeah, Perk Angle will drop your ass. No, he must moon salt. He must moon salt. Surrender all moon salt. <laughs> I love it, dude. Oh. Yeah! So, man, what's what's everybody been up to? You know, Delta back there. What are you up to? Oh my god, I'm just chilling out listening to you. It's been so long since we talked, Dad. I know, man. I know. I know. It's been it's been too long. Same thing with you, Mister Tyler Adams. Yeah, man, we haven't we haven't Facetimed in a while, so we'll have to do that. I know, uh, dude, totally. Maybe tonight because we're we're uh we're we're doing the same thing at midnight tonight. So yes, we'll yes, 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 <laughs> dude, dude, you did not help a bunch to just pop the shit out of me. Yes, <laughs> what I'm here for to pop the boys. I I swear I feel like that is one of the most non sinful things I could ever do in my life is just to pop. The boys. <laughs> I feel like that, uh, I feel like that always goes as good guy points. So we'll. What? Life is always about popping the boys. And then, what's up with Mr. Matt Thunder there? Uh, fucking nothing, man. Just been chilling and fucking editing. 
being the being the best in the world, huh? Yeah, just vibing, dude. <laughs> dude. That's how it be. There you go. So, Dak, I saw you guys recently got the ring back, and for the people listening, they won't know that you guys even had a point where you didn't have the ring, but I saw you guys got back in the ring recently. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, man, we've been training. Uh, trying to do as much as we can. Trying to do as much as we can while we have this break, because we want to come back and we want to we want to really do what we can actually do, because, to be honest with you, nobody has really seen what we can do yet. I mean... Right. That's a real shame. The, it's, yeah, it, yeah it facts. I can't wait for the return of TBW, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. So, yeah, we've been doing that. We've been working out. Um, I've been getting some stuff down in the ring. So, John. John's learning how to do a fucking moonsault. That's <laughs> deadly as hell. He's literally going to be Kurt Angle. <laughs> Let John move. He's, he's a shooter. He just needs to. He just needs to shave his head bald and do a singlet. He would be Kurt Angle. <laughs> please do it. Oh God, please do not ever do that. I'm not doing that. But John's like John's like the reincarnation of Kurt Angle, and you know what you must do since you know they decided to make Kurt Angle's last match against Baron Corbin. You're gonna you're Oh yeah, Jack Delta cried for that, I think. Uh, yeah, I, oh. yeah, I was very upset. <laughs> Crying. John needs to go to WWE eventually and whoop Baron Corbin's ass. I would love to. Honestly, I would, I would love to. The Olympic gold medalist. We need to get that pizza off the TV. Oh, God. Oh, man, he's shooting. <laughs> Yeah. Like well, that. I mean, sorry to interrupt. I just want to see how everybody was doing. I feel like a jackass. I just did. I just spent like eight minutes talking. Fuck. No. <laughs> this is right what there. the people came to hear, man. Yeah. yeah. This is what the people came to hear for. Hear, hear. Yeah, I can't talk. You know what I mean. Well, people, I am here. <laughs> so that's all I gotta say. <laughs> So with that being said, with everything with the ring, the next time we come down, would we be able to still be uh, get in the ring there, or what would we? What would the plans be for that? There's a possibility. Then? There's a po- definitely. Oh, cool. Oh shit. Definitely. Um, I think we need to if if we are going to do that, there is repairs that need to be done first. Oh, so many repairs. Uh, There's a big indent. In yeah. The yeah, and well, the reason it's just because just we haven't used it in a while, and it's just sat there, you know, and it's rained constantly, and it's just it, it wasn't good on the ring. Um, so we need to make, and then it should be all that'd be a fun together. project. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know I mean? Speaking for speaking for me, at least uh, I would be willing to pitch in just to uh, to help get some of those things replaced with the ring and. Well, get it back to shape. Be like Civil War all over again. Well, that, yeah, man. Like, well, we'd have to. It'd be. We'd have to completely like just de- like take off some of the boards and stuff. Oh yeah, we did get some repairs during Civil War, didn't we? Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, we well, all thanks, Adam. Them. Man, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. I'd love to do that. <clears throat> yeah, and Richard Christian will totally do all the labor like that. Um, you know, and <laughs> we'll force him to do the labor. What we did was uh, one of our neighbors actually gave us two mattresses, but we couldn't keep them, and we used them, and oh my god, it was hella fun. <laughs> it was hella fun. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was, I was. Flying over fucking everywhere. <laughs> oh, one of my favorite things we've ever done is like the frog splash and elbow drop uh, contest. That oh, was. Oh my so god, dude! Oh, yes. that, was so that was awesome. That bear got fucked up. <laughs> dude, it, it just happens. Like every time there's a big stuffed bear around any of our guys, like that bear just gets fucked oh, up. Yeah. yeah, the same thing with the one at Thunder's house that just. Uh... You see it in some of the videos, and it, it doesn't look like he's in great shape. Anymore, oh, my so. God. <laughs> no. And I, uh, it's because uh, everyone just fights it all the time. I have a 10-minute video of Joe Dean and Blake Viper just beating up the bear. <laughs> for 10 minutes. Joe Dean and Blake Viper beating up a bear. Wow, that's cool. Ooh, yeah. That is cool. I got a, I got a question for you, Dax. This should be released. <laughs> we can't do that. What was your question there, Senor Thunder? What are your thoughts on Blake Viper and Viper Mania? 
Oh, dude, I like. Oh. I think he's. I, of course, you know, with all all young talent, uh, some things need to be worked out, and that's you know that's normal. That's everybody. Um, he's incredibly over. Jesus Christ. Um, so oh yeah, I, insanely over. I think he has big plans. Or I hope he has big plans and has big visions because he could have something going for him. Oh, uh, listen, yo, fuck Tyler Green. <laughs> 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 He's awful. He shot on me and beat my ass. Yeah, Tyler Green sucks. I fucking hate and that he guy. Just had rough sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he did. I hate him. <laughs> Wow. Whoa, that was good. He just exposed the business. I don't like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great. Oh, <laughs> kick his ass right now. You know, you oh my god, dude. Podcast. This podcast is going to end up being a goddamn wrestling show, but at least it'd be better than Monday Night Raw, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean most most MEBW episodes are better than Raw. Honestly, damn. Oh, good time. What did you think of WrestleMania? I haven't really picked your brain about that, Dak. Uh, to be honest with you, it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Um. Yeah, I love I love the Boneyard match. Wow, that yeah. was just that just. It just escalated. It was just different kind of wrestling, like something to pull out that's they can use competitively. Is that 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 was a smart move? Um, I don't call it a wrestling match because it wasn't. Um, oh, definitely not. But it, it's a good entertainment. The same with Bray Wyatt and John Cena. It was just it wasn't a wrestling match. Um, other than that, I mean, <laughs> with, with without a crowd, it's really is just not the same to me. Um, but with that being said, I do think that everything that was planned on that show I think went accordingly. I think they did everything that they could have done with the show, and they did the best what they could do. I mean, I, I gave the Mania a 6 out of 10. And that's better... I think that's a fair That's grade. better than any of the past Manias I've watched in the past, like, five years. Like, 32. All right, 32, I give a zero out of 10. Right now, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? It's Adam. It's gotta be. It's gotta be Adam. It's gotta be Adam. There is a fucking bee flying around. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Alright, someone swat that shit. Right, let me... I'm trying. I'm trying to get it. It keeps flying. <laughs> damn, it sounds like it's on the damn microphone. Just swat it. <laughs> <laughs> what is... Holy shit. God damn, does someone just shit their pants? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it literally... Adam, do you have like a microphone plugged in? God damn it. <laughs> I'm an electric chair, dude. Holy shit. God damn it. Adam, you have some food Google instead it. of gnawing on your microphone. Go eat something, dude. You don't have to gnaw on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> he put hot sauce on the microphone. Oh. oh. <laughs> I think that that's I think that's a story that that should be talked about at some point. That is a story that to be said. I, I the I'd floor is yours. Right. The floor is yours. Right now. Hey, let me take you back to Civil War, <laughs> and let me tell you the time that we walked into the back door of John's house, and we the fridge is right there by the back door, and oh. I just see Adam go into the fridge, and I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna, whatever. And he gets hot sauce, and I'm just like, what the fuck is he doing with that? And sure enough, it was Mad Dog 57, <laughs> the absolute hottest fucking sauce I've ever put in my mouth. Um, 100%. And um, 
he just gets t- I remember he got his pointer finger and middle finger and just dipped his whole damn finger into it and ate it. And I was just like, I was just like, out of you, son of a bitch, you're gonna die. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, no, dude, I, I love spicy we stuff, dude. Him, dude. I know, we warned <laughs> you, you we, son of a bitch. We warned him about how Oh boy, because I usually <laughs> eat spicy shit no problem, and I'll eat like the spiciest shit out there. But I mean, that stuff was like, I don't know, that stuff was like not even, not even like edible, dude. That shit was. <laughs> dude, just, and then I just remember he's just, like, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, dude, that, 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 that's decent. And then all of a sudden he's in the bathroom, and I walk in, and he's sitting on the toilet. And he's like, dude, I'm not okay. Yeah, it's like, god damn. <laughs> We did, we did, and I, I remember because, of course, you know, he, he didn't give a fuck, he's just sitting there shitting his brains out, he's just like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm not okay, and I was just like, god damn, Adam, god damn it. Well, it didn't even, like, it didn't even phase my mouth, and that's why for a second I was like, yeah, it's okay, and then it went straight to my stomach, and it didn't help that I hadn't eaten much that day, so, it was just putting volcano shit on an empty on an empty stomach <laughs> god damn dude he's just yeah i i had a sample of the sauce and uh yeah i had to go take a walk out in the forest and then i turned right <laughs> back when i started <laughs> dude that shit will put you in the ground he went he went he took the powder somebody's going to die eating that sauce <laughs> yeah Somebody's gonna be like, probably. My insides are literally melting out of my asshole. Oh my god! People who people who can't like handle like the littlest of spice, if they took that, they they would eat, they oh. would die if oh. they ate that. Oh. oh, oh, dude! If if a lightweight with a hot sauce did that, they'd eat shit and die. Oh, they would. They would not. They would not be breathing. You would have to. I, I think you would seriously have to take them to the hospital if it was someone who didn't like have experience with any spice or had very little experience with spice like you I gotta... thought I had to take you. Yeah, we thought we had to take you. Because I kept asking you because you were sitting on the recliner and you just looked you were just you were fucked up and not in a good way. <laughs> no, it's cause like as soon as it hit my stomach I was like sweating. I was like I was like what is this dude? Like this isn't even like this had to have been recalled or something like this. Is- <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, what time is it, guys? I don't have my watch on me. It's. Oh my it's- god! I think it's well, ending. It's, 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 a, it's a certain time. What time? I think it's. I think it's ending time, dude. It's Play the theme song. Play the theme song. Have a great idea. Well, you may have a great idea, but I have something to tell you. What's up? Do you live in a world where women don't want to talk to you? Do you live in a, in a house where no one will go near you? Do you live in constant shame and humiliation caused by insufferable swamp ass? Try our new Johnson & Johnson ass wipes. They wipe, clear, moisten, and refresh in every buttocks. No matter how dense and hairy your ass crack is. <laughs> Joint scoop. And now you can use the promo code Jersey Boys and save fifteen percent on your first purchase, plus free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to visit www.jnj.com slash fake admin and use promo code Jersey Boys at checkout and save on your very own Johnson & Johnson ass wipes, guaranteed to keep your ass clean. This product may or may not be real. Johnny Bruiser uses them. He can't use toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, was that the ad read? <laughs> you know, you powers, you might make more money since nobody can get any fucking toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. That was uh, from the excellence of one Tommy Gunn. Uh, I, I texted him. I was like, hey, I want to do ad reads on the podcast. Can you send me like a like a mock script? He immediately sent me one. And I was like, are you kidding? This is great. <laughs> this is golden. That's that is Tommy's thing. I love him. Tommy loves doing ads. We have this. He did a Clorox wipe ad on fucking Johnny Bruiser. It was a shoot promo because he doesn't know how to wipe his ass with anything that isn't that so uh, fucking wipes. 
Damn. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why he that's what he got fired from MEBW was because he didn't know how to wipe his ass in Tommy Gunn's house. <laughs> oh my god, I remember him telling me. Yeah. <laughs> I could not stop laughing. I remember that shit. Dude, let me tell you something. It's about such Tommy, a good man. story. That is one hell of a dude. The man's had nothing but he's shown nothing but respect and kindness to me, and I just want to give a shout out to him because that dude is fucking awesome. I love that guy. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. I'll let him know you said that. Sweet. He'll love that. I wonder if he listens to this. He better. Although I don't actually, I don't know with what. <laughs> well, I mean, if he listens to our first one, maybe we'll have that competition going between the Jersey Boys podcast and the uh, ranting. Uh, or no, not the ranting. Oh, the Gun and Roman uh, show, yeah. The Gun and Roman show, yeah. Gun and Roman show, wow. Yeah, yeah and Max and uh, Tommy do their little podcast, and uh, I don't know, maybe we'll do the Monday Night Wars if if they're into it. Depends. I don't know when they want to do their stuff. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty dope. That's the good thing about quarantine. If we get to do all this new content that we didn't normally get to do. Dude, let me tell you something. I miss doing podcasts. Dude... I miss I I was sad that I never got to do the Dak Ryan experience. Oh my God, I miss dude. it just I barely. Just, I miss it so much because I I I just I I got to talk to everybody and everybody wanted to be on it and like I don't know I just I got a lot of love from it. I really appreciated it. Doing like it's such a rare thing to see. Like there's there's always companies that do them, but like you don't really just they don't really get pushed around a lot. But I remember hearing about yours a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Dak was the most popular one because he was the one. Dak, you were really the one to um, to start Backyard Wrestling Podcast and to get those out there like that because you were the first one to have one. And then it was then that other people started to do it. So you kind of pioneered that yourself. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, I want to say there was m- m- more Backyard Wrestling Podcasts that were more popular than mine. But, like, then I couldn't really you know there was some in the past that just were I'm, nothing was compared mine wasn't compared to those um but i think well the thing is is that i just felt like everybody i wanted everybody to be united i wanted everybody to i didn't want any real beef between really anybody and nobody needed the beef with us and it's just you know like it's we just didn't need any of that so i was just like you know i just i want to make this podcast and i want to talk to everybody because I feel like, you know, everybody has something to say and, you know, you can only learn from it. So, I had I had really good man. There's, some of them are in this or at least one is in this chat. Yeah, I've been on there what, twice, I think? Yeah, I think you've been on there twice. You I had, think that was the last episode. Damn. Yeah, you had me on there but we had the internet cut out different, so... Um... Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I was gonna have Tyler Adams on there and then I don't. I never knew why I didn't have Dell. Oh, I just. I don't know. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't aware people were doing podcasts at the time. To be honest, <laughs> he didn't have a Twitter back no then. Told me. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, they say some Twitter gold mine for stuff like that. I love Twitter. Oh yeah, I miss when Twitter was hot with backyard wrestling when TBW was still around and. Uh, MEBW kind of had that competition going. Um, I think Twitter was a was a great place for all that because oh yeah, kind of connected everybody. So oh, whether yeah. that you know whether that be in a good way or a bad way, sometimes it's just uh, Twitter's Twitter's really easy to connect backyard wrestling together. Oh heck yeah, heck totally. yeah, definitely. I mean, there don't get me wrong. There's some sour people. I mean, there was definitely some sour people. <laughs> One hundred percent. That TJ Evans guy. <laughs> Dak Ryan, yeah. I'm gonna destroy you. <laughs> Max Mizro, I'm gonna beat you. Man. And then he wonders why I never responded. Yeah. Oh, dude, social media drama is so weird to have. It's like. As as big as we may be in the backyard wrestling community, like overall in the YouTube community, we're relatively small. Oh, yeah. Um, but like all these like kids that wrestle teddy bears are like trying to jump at us, and it's like guys, relax. Like yeah, it's backyard wrestling. 
Well, it's the thing is that everybody wants to be competitive, but the thing is is that the ones that are really competitive about it are the ones that try the hardest and seem to run and play. The, the, the thing with me is that you either understand wrestling or you don't, and if you don't understand it, you're not going to do it. Right. Yeah, unless one of those weird people that uh, just comment in character yeah. under videos. Oh, yeah. And you're like, the thing is coming. It's like, shut the fuck up. No one Yeah, does. I mean... <laughs> It, it's it, it's that simple. It's either you're in this or you're not. And if you're not, then you are you're not going to be at the top of the list. And like I said, I just think wrestling comes natural. I think everybody that's in this chat right now, something in wrestling comes natural to them. That's why we get it. And you know, you know, there's, yeah, there's some definitely. wrestlers that don't have the same credentials as others, but that's the best part about wrestling. Is that it's arguably the most diverse entertainment. I mean, there's there's everything. There's all kinds of races. There's all kinds of styles of wrestling. I mean, there's there's just so much diversity, and that's what I really love about it. Yeah, wrestling's like a whole other creature as opposed to other forms of entertainment, like you said. It just... Mm-hmm. And unfortunately... Every yep. aspect goes into it. Yep, and unfortunately, it's interesting, good, and bad ways. Right. Mm. Mm-hmm. Stay away from the bad shit. That's all I gotta say. Oh, dude. This, yeah. this wrestling can make you, or it will break you. Yeah. Yeah. That easy. It's and it's it's so easy. It's so easy. Oh, I. I even as someone who hasn't like wrestled, I completely understand that because it's like, I don't think any other form of entertainment is as physically taxing as wrestling can be now there's, there's certain ones that are of course there's weird sports and like mma is a little more physically taxing but there's still a big element in wrestling and like it's dangerous and the people that do it right uh they do it right and the people that do it wrong have the chance of killing themselves yep right it only like come down to the physical aspect though it can come down to the mental aspect and you get into it especially when it comes to uh getting into professional wrestling, separating that from backyard wrestling. Um, one minute you could have everything and you know, the next moment you could be you could be nothing in wrestling. And that's how that's how quick wrestling moves and how quick wrestling will move on from you mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. give it a hundred oh. all the time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a hundred percent true. See, this is that's what I hate about people that wrestle and do it as a hobby because listen there's a lot that goes into this and it's more than a hobby. Um, you travel all the time. You put, you have to put everything into it. And if you really love it, like all of us do, that's all you think about. Right. Oh yeah. Wrestling, yeah. wrestling, yep. Yep. wrestling will consume you very, very easily. And just so you know, if like, you learn everything properly, you learn all the holds, you learn all the bumps, you learn everything properly. Everything yes. still hurts. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this yep. is not like fake. It, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it, it hurts. Uh, like, eventually your body kind of like doesn't feel it as much, but it's just because you're so used to taking that ass kicking every yeah. time you step in. Believe the me, ring. I bumped in. But this match after quarantine is going to fucking suck. <laughs> oh, 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 I already know. know. That is going to suck ass. I swear if Tommy tries to pounce me, I'm going <laughs> to kick him in the balls. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah, I wouldn't want Tommy pouncing me either. I'd go flying. I, but, I mean, I don't know. Like like what Delta said with like the bumps and stuff. Like, yes, this is this is real. I mean, t- take it from me. I, I take it from John right here. I, I've bumped anywhere from the ground. I've bumped in homemade rings. I've bumped in real rings. I've bumped... Pretty much on anything. Yeah. I've bumped on. I've bumped on kitchen floors, literally. Yeah. Ouch. I've done. Damn. Con- I've done mm. concrete. Mm, yeah. I haven't done concrete, but that's <laughs> fucking skid my fucking skin off, dude. Well, in MEBW, it's really easy to accidentally hit concrete because the tarp, <laughs> the, the size of the tarp, it kind of like overlaps onto a little bit of pavement near the garage and shed there, oh. and. Uh, it, yeah. It's really easy to just slam your shoulder on that. You boys but, need to build you know. a base. Yeah, you boys do need to build a base. It's scaring me. 
Yeah. That's uh, scary, guys. Believe me. I mean, I was all for the backyard wrestling and doing on the ground and stuff. And then I learned that there's a bump card. There is a bump card. And you don't know when that thing expires. You'll, you, you'll definitely see what I'm talking about because when you get in a ring and you do three hours of bumping and stuff and you feel it the next day, you'll exactly see what I'm talking about. You will feel it. You, dude. I have been so sore that I John can John can tell you I couldn't move. Yeah, no, Dak was not going anywhere. No, I wasn't going anywhere. Damn, son. And that was a that was and that's a normal wrestling ring. That's about as normal soft as you're gonna get it. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Learn how to bump Damn. kids, <laughs> and everybody that's a, that wants to be a wrestler or yeah. is a wrestler, you need to learn how to bump. Don't hit your head. Don't be an idiot. Yeah, and stop hitting motherfuckers with light tubes. And, I mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't. I've been hit with light yeah. tubes, so I can't, I can't be like that. Fight yeah, I agree that, with but. Dak here. Plus, I mean, if it's if it's for a show that you're getting paid for, then oh, if you're yeah, getting paid for, then yeah, go for if it. You're but if you're not going getting to do paid something for like that, that is a risk. At least get paid for it, dude. No, there are some 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 things that I wish I just would not do in DVW. Yes, same with me. There's there are, like, there's I, some stuff I totally regret because that, there was no there was no reason for me to go through a table on fire. Yeah, <laughs> like that was just a spot that I actually mm-hmm. not have done. No, nah. and the thing is, is that you'll you'll learn with training. You'll learn with understanding the business. That you'll learn that you don't have to do all that shit. Yeah, it's not needed. Like, if you can get your couple moves but over, I then you're already good. I will not say it's not popular and over. I can't extremely popular and over. Extremely. And it's a, it's, oh, a, it's, a big, it's big money. But my point is, is that it's just that shit is, that shit just catches up to you and it's painful. And I, I don't know. I'd rather just do the flips, take the bump, take a big bump than do any of that. I, I don't know. That's just me. Right. It also, it also yeah, it, changes by wrestler and by uh, character, by motion, by everything. Everything has an effect on everything, and that just you know, it's a wrestling. Wrestling is a complete butterfly effect, and that's how it that's how it goes. So some people to get over have to go do that hardcore stuff, but some people, you know, some people don't. So it just, I think it does vary by wrestler and and by every other aspect put into it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. One hundred percent. I mean, so me as a heel, I don't need to go out there and have a hundred hardcore matches because that's not going to be my gimmick, you know. What I mean, so as a heel, I don't need to go out there and look for those hardcore matches specifically, but I will do them under the right circumstances. Yeah, it, it, exactly. You don't want to if you're a bad guy and you want to win and really bastard, and you just you just want to be the cheapest motherfucker ever, then why would you want to go through all that trouble? You'd want to make it short and sweet. Right. So, yes. Yeah, I do see what you're saying. And that's a very good point. Yeah. Tyler Adams is a bastard. Because going in, because I can, because like the way I think of it too is like, I could do uh, flips and, and stuff like that. I could do a bunch of fancy moves, but as a heel, if I can get my, if I can get my gimmick over and I can get, it, it, getting to the finish in a match and doing all those things and the art of all those things are way more important than going and putting on a spot best. So for me, I don't need to because I'm a heel. Why would I want to mm-hmm. think of it in those terms? Why would I want to? Why would yeah. I want to make these fans happy by doing a bunch of shit like that? Like that's mm-hmm. there's no reason. For that. Yes, exactly. As a, and yes, one hundred percent. See, yeah, you, that's the thing is that you can make it short and sweet, and the crowd will love it as long as you do your job. The thing is that I don't have to do, I don't have to do the style I have to do. Nobody really does. Right. High flying is just fancy, but I do it because you do. Why wouldn't I? So yeah, and that, and that's to say that I, that's not to say that I'll never hit a suicide dive or a tope. I will. Mm-hmm. It's just like you know what I, you know what I mean with that not being my character. It's not something I should advertise and. And, and if anything, if I'm at a pro show and I hit a tope and the crowd starts cheering because they're going to cheer for athleticism either way, I need to shut them down and, and I need to flip them off or something and say, fuck you and, and whatever. And just get get in their face and kind of let them know that I'm not trying to be flashy. So that's why I 
that's why I look at it like that. And that's and that goes into moves too, like making moves look more devastating, making you know, making them look like a heel way of doing a move. So I really look into all that when I when I go out there and do that. Yep, so. exactly. And it's it, of course always with being a great heel being a great heel means you gotta have a great baby face to go along with it. Yeah, um, definitely. Me and John are a prime example of that. Yeah, and getting the baby face over, if you don't know how to do that, you don't know how to put together a, a, well, a well-rounded good wrestling match. Yeah, man, it takes, it, it, in this business, it takes two to tango, dude. I mean, mm-hmm. if I had a match with somebody that just was just absolutely shitty at wrestling, do you think it would be a good match? No. You don't want to work with me that good. Well, I, I'm good, under, I'm one of the people under the opinion that you could put on a great match with a broomstick, but I see what you're saying. Um, no, see, I could take bumps for a broom. I don't know about yeah, a broom match. Too, <laughs> but, but, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's how I look at it. Is is things like that? You need to know how to get the baby face over first and foremost. You need to know when to when to place things in the match to really get it over with people and not just go out there and. Yeah. Two moves because it's not. Yeah, exactly. And with that, that takes time. You know, placing spots and stuff. There's a lot of indie guys now that don't even know how to do that. Psychology. Is probably yeah. The that, that, thing that, you need. Yes, psychology is the biggest thing you need, John. Is right because, listen, whether people know that this is fake or not, you have to portray as a character because that's that's, that's what gets you over. Right. It's. Wrestling, doing all the athleticism skills and all the shit, you could be the cleanest, best wrestler in the world. Do you could do anything you wanted to, and I guarantee you, if somebody had a better character and a better story, they would make twice as much money as that guy. Right, and it's it's about selling tickets at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I learned from actually from Al Snow about selling tickets is if you're the face, you're you know. You're trying to get over with the people. If you're the heel, you're helping that baby face get over, and that is the that is the goal. Yep. You know, and that 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 comes with something as simple as if I'm the heel, and I I walk up to the baby face and I tell him, I'm I'm not gonna let you punch me in the face. My my face is too good looking for you to punch me in the face. And the whole match, I keep dancing around the ring, rolling out, and letting the referee start his count. When that baby face finally lands a punch on me, that will be the biggest pop of the match. And exactly. from a simple punch. And so that's one of the things I was very fortunate to learn because uh, I study wrestling. I sleep, breathe wrestling and Knowing how to build else. something up will get you more over than anything. Mm-hmm. Building up, yeah. like you could build up any any move. You could build up to have a pop. Let's say I walk right. into a match with, with someone that's a lot bigger than me. And I mean, I'm I'm a shooter style, so I'm gonna try to suplex him. Let's say when I go for that suplex, I barely get him off the ground. He cuts me off, just starts wailing on me. Later on in the match, I try to pick him up again, get him up a little higher, cuts me off again, punches the crap out of me, puts more heat in on me. When I go for it that third time, and let's say I actually get it, I guarantee you, I'll get some kind of reaction. Right there, you go. Yeah, that's about as short and sweet as you can get it. So if you can if you can have a skill of being able to build yeah. something up and create a storyline within the wrestling, it's like you're golden. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things I look for in a match is really to uh, is to to build the match around the storyline. So if it's if it's a personal storyline between two guys, you're not going to go out there and do a test of strength for three hours. You're going to punch that guy in the face. And you guys are going to fight, so that's that's how I look at story aspects. Would you agree, Dak? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, that's yeah. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, and I think the the thing about wrestling that always uh, there's a lot of arguments about it that I see online in the internet wrestling community, but people need to understand is like a wrestling roster needs to be balanced as well, like. Flippy guys are great when you have like one or two, but when your entire roster is flippy exactly. guys, then it doesn't See, mean that's anything. That's the thing is that, and that's... you have it, it all goes back to what John was saying you got to milk the crowd. It's, it's the same thing when you have a plethora mm-hmm. of superstars, you have to milk them with it. See, that's see, that's what I 
like about 205 Live and all that shit. Because you have a, you have a show that's specifically pointing to high flyers, and that's not getting any shine. You're just burying everybody. Because there's no diversity, so it's not exactly. It, it doesn't them over. That's why nobody. And yeah, that's, that. why, that's why nobody watches 205 Live, and, and the reason is there's no diversity. It's a bunch of guys doing the same thing. They're never. And that's and that's the shitty part is that. Everybody on 205 Live, I could argue say, was incredibly talented and deserved to be there. Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're all really good. It's just, you're giving these guys their own platforms, and everybody can't, everybody wants to pay attention to one. Not multiple. No, nobody wants to multitask pay attention. Nobody wants to fucking do that. That's stupid. Who's, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, well, you, well, Brock Lesnar's world champion, and uh, I don't know, Lince Dorado's cruiserweight the fuck cares about Lince Dorado? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I I agree, and that's what I kind of that's what I liked about WCW. Sort of, I mean, WCW kind of started the whole grouping thing together, but what they used to is you'd have your cruiserweight bouts with diversity in them, and it's and then you'd have you know your heavyweights, your light heavyweights, your tag, and that's what I like. But that needs to be in a unity sections in one unity. Not groups. You don't need to have groups that separate themselves. You need to have branches from one. And I think WCW did good at that until the very end. But then again, everything from WCW sucked at the very end. So that could be just booking decisions. But yeah, I, I yeah I we're gonna go because at Vince, we're gonna at Vince Russo on that one. Mm-hmm, yeah, and I'd also like to say to Vince Russo, you piece of fucking shit. I hate you. You ruined the fucking <laughs> wrestling business. And, um, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and Thank you, you clearly said on, on television that you didn't give a shit about wrestling, but yet you want to talk about it, and I never want to hear it come out of your fucking mouth again. And Dak says what everyone else that- is thinking. God, I can't wait till... Cornette and Russo eventually, like, somehow... I was just off. about to say, Dak, what's your opinion on Cornette? Uh, well, everybody hates Cornette, but to be honest with you, he's one of my favorites. And I can explain to you why. And the reason why is because the man fucking understands wrestling. At the end of the day, he knows what he's talking about. He says no. No, there's some things that are just absolutely ridiculous. So it's like, okay, dude, you're just bitching the bitch. But... He understands yeah. that, like, uh, like for like he doesn't like Marco Stunt because of what they've done with Marco Stunt. He doesn't necessarily hate Marco Stunt, and the reason why is because the guy's fucking five foot tall and one hundred and twenty pounds. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. He goes. That is a very hard. That is a very hard thing to sell. If yes. Somebody at that. Yes, and and Marco Stunt's selling is great with it. Don't get me wrong, but that dude should not get offense on people like fucking Moxley and people like Lance Archer. Are you kidding me? That's right. like that's like me getting the upper back or a shine on the Big Show. Well, well, it's the Big Show. It's just not logical, yep. dude. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like Xavier yeah. King beating yeah. Otis. That's where a Ken's story comes into play with wrestling, where it's like, okay, if you're telling this story, let's let's be realistic so that we can we can make these people think what's going on right now might actually be real. You have to put them in that other universe, and they're gonna exit that universe immediately if they see some shit that is just not believable, downright not exactly. Believable at all. And the, here's the thing: is that you can make that stuff work, but it goes back to milking. You to milk yeah. the crowd into it. You have to you have to find a way to get this guy over. And small guys, to be honest with you, are not really that hard to get over right now. They, they, they pull the yeah. underdog this card hard on everybody. And if you can make it work, you can actually make that work. But if you just plain out do it, that's just fucking sorry. That's just oh. that's just dumb as hell. I, I, I just I don't I don't really like that. But other than that, I love Cornette. I listen to him every single day. I'm a huge fan. I mean, I just... What about Meltzer? Oh, I fucking hate Dave Meltzer. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, I, I agree. No, I got this. I got this, guys. 
Uncle He's a Mark. Dave, I got this. Uncle Dave, you wanna go eat the spaghetti with the fucking young bugs? And you Jabroni. wanna rate their matches six stars because you kissed your fucking ass. I'm a fuck about you, Uncle Dave. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. Fuck Dave Meltzer. I'm. T- I think the wrestler. I'm glad we brought this around to Dave Meltzer. Um, I think the wrestling, the internet wrestling community has been ruined by Dave Meltzer because you get fucks like that JD from NY that just completely bitch and shit on WWE every second they get, and yet they still continue to watch each and every week, solely looking for something to complain about. It's like, listen, if you think WWE is the worst thing. You're you're fine to have your opinion, yeah. but then just stop watching it. Like if if I watch a shitty TV show, I'm not a good, not gonna go. Oh man, this fucking sucks. Oh, I'll watch these. Yeah, but, I mean, I, you know why? Why not? I used like, to, no. I used to I listen to JD from NY, and I think John did too. But I think yeah, I agree with that. I just think it got to the point where he just fucking bitched about it too much, and it was just like, dude, this is the same shit. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is that the thing is, is that. He's yeah. kind of a lying sack of shit, and the reason why he's a lying sack of shit is because he sits there and says, I'm just doing it for all my fans. I'm doing it for all my fans. But the <laughs> thing is that, no, you're not. You're doing it as a character because you have this gimmick going because everybody's listening to this podcast because you're fucking shitting on the product. That's how you make your money. You have a yep. gimmick going. You're not better than any of the other WWE superstars, so fuck off. Right, and... The, the thing I hate yep. about Meltzer, the number one thing I would say that sucks about Meltzer, is who is this guy to tell you what a great wrestler? And I'm not saying that he, he doesn't have a respected opinion, but at the end of the day, when wrestlers take his word as gospel, and this guy's never, ever worked a match in his life, he's a fan. Why are we taking his opinion so seriously on a match? He's never worked a match in his life. He's never He's never put in a hold. He's never been trained. He's never had the experience of traveling and wrestling and doing all this stuff like he's never done it he's a fan yeah well that's the that's the funny and crazy part about all this is that the reason why he's so respected in the community is because he came he writes in that goddamn magazine and writes all these wrestlers and all the marks that watched his kids became the wrestlers so then they're all marks for the magazine to begin with so then they're marking out over it and now it's become sunk into the wrestling business and Dave Meltzer didn't have any fucking part in doing this. So, yeah. at the end of the day, it's the wrestler's mm-hmm. fault. But, yeah. Dave Meltzer... Oh, but the he thing is, helped is that Dave Meltzer raise the fire. Corny made a very good point about it, is that Cornette was like, it's not like Dave Meltzer doesn't know how this business works. He totally does. He's been doing this for decades. He knows right. the ins and outs of this business just as good as anybody else. And the thing is, is that he... Is a fucking mark. He doesn't give a shit. So what he does, he just goes, oh, mm-hmm. well, wrestling's changing. So I guess I'm just going to go be a mark for them. Have you noticed that he really doesn't do WB reviews and stuff like that anymore? Yeah, he's way heavier on any other. Uh, any any other. other. And the reason why is because everybody in WB told him to fuck off. Yeah. Then he's under the mm, fucking AEW payroll. That, see? Like that—that's why. Yeah. That's why. That. Yeah. That's why like, I always get heated about AEW. Is like I'm sure the wrestler. There's a lot of talented guys on there. I don't hold it against a lot of them. But like the corporate culture and like the social media around AEW is just so toxic and shit that the it's, it's like a really yeah, yeah, I can. I I, I can totally agree with that. Oh, it's horrible. Is that like. I love WB sometimes. I love AEW sometimes. The thing is, is that I think in an overall aspect, wrestling sucks fucking dick right now. Mm-hmm. And yeah. people aren't seeming yeah. to grasp how to fix. The reason why is because everybody has just done whatever bullshit they wanted to do. Because it's the fucking marks. I'm telling you, dude. It all comes back to them. It started with Shawn Michaels yeah. and the click, mm-hmm. and it just fucking snowballed from there. Right, and, and I think we should point to certain marks uh, in, in particular because to, to say marks, I, I feel like that's a general term because one of the other things that I've learned is at the end of the day, as wrestlers, as fans, as promoters, as anything, we're all marks. We all are. Mm-hmm. But when you say it, I think we can we can understand the connotation that you are talking about. Um, smart. More, more in, in in general, and that's the the AEW smart. Mm, so. I'm yes. gonna when when it was when with the whole Mark thing, I'm gonna have to 
disagree with you on that one, mainly just because between wrestlers and marks because marks are trying to be a part of the business but are still fans wrestlers are in the business and we're and we respect we it. respect right I, yeah, yeah you can like we can from... still mark over other wrestlers like don't get me wrong like mm-hmm. you can be a big fan of other wrestlers as being one it's just like it's when fans try to act like they know everything about the wrestling business. See, but I feel like that more is a smart because that's a mm-hmm. that that comes from the term smart mark. They think they're smarter than they are, and they think that they know more about the business than they do. When I say marks, I'm thinking of a term in general, just saying that you know, like anyone. Th- this is just more of like an old style attitude. But anyone who anyone who marks out for something. That that means in some sort of way at heart, there's a part of you that's a mark. But um, I get what you guys are saying too with the thing about people acting like they know more about the business and trying to be in the business when they're when they're not. And that that more, I, I think that's more of the reason that the term smart was created. Mm. For those kind of yeah, things. yeah, I agree. And the thing is, is that all these fans, I can get all these marks by telling them, do they really even know where the term mark even came from? Because I know. And it's an old term used in the 60s and 70s for a guy, for a fanboy. A guy that's, it, it, it's clearly what it says. It's a fanboy that thinks that he's part of the business when he isn't. And that was a respectful word to tell somebody. That was a big deal back in the day. You called somebody a mark, you were more than likely going to fight it was it's a very disrespectful word and the thing is that it's it's been popularized now and it's been it's been overused to the point where it doesn't have that meaning as much anymore but i i agree with you too adam is the fact that there's smarks too and there's there there is a difference but there's not a difference because the thing is, is that we just put the tag of marks on everybody but there are smarks that's the guys that think that they're fucking smarter than they actually are and let me tell you something you don't know a damn thing about what you're talking about because you haven't wrestled in a match and you haven't paid your dues and you haven't you haven't done what I've done, John has done, and we work hard for that. Very, very hard. And I don't know, it's just it's kind of disrespectful in a lot of ways. I don't let it get to me as bad because I'm better than that. I can do my own shit. But it is at the end of the day it is disrespectful because even John can say, we have busted our ass to do this. Big time. It's not easy. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that, that like you said, it has uh, it has changed meaning because the meaning in the, in the beginning, obviously, like you said, was the most negative thing ever. You calling somebody that mm-hmm. it would be a total insult. But, like you said, as it got popularized, it, uh, the, the term it ended up branching off into a bunch of different meanings that didn't hold true to the original one. So I guess that's where that exactly that fits with that. Exactly. Yeah. Kayfabe is another word that people throw no, out. That see, it's like, I you don't fucking know, know what it means. Well, Shut how up. I was taught about kayfabe was there's different <laughs> levels. And the thing though, is that you have to follow all of these levels in order for it to work. If you don't follow all of the orders, it will not work. And kayfabe is what made wrestling wrestling mm-hmm. back in the day. That's what made it believable. That's how there was heels and faces and people actually were attempting to stab wrestlers because they hated them so much. Yeah, that's kayfabe. You see, kayfabe, yep. dude. I've heard kayfabe, plenty of corn up stories like that. Favorites, yep. My favorite stories to hear is like when some wrestlers tell stories of fans coming up to them and saying that it's fake and then like punching them in the face and knocking them out in one punch or like biting their ear off. Yeah. It's like they really protect Yeah, those are my favorite stories. Kayfabe. Yeah, because that's that was the entire business. Yeah. Anybody could go out there and really slam each other, right? But can you do everything in the business? And that's the thing is that they made it, they it all mixed together to where they made it look like it was as real as real shit I mean, I have watched a lot of 80s wrestling. I've watched a lot of 70s wrestling, too, to be honest. And 
there is not a more believable wrestling than, and it's it, it shows, and it's just like it in the nineties, like Shawn Michaels and all them. They are the reasons why it is as bad as it is. Yes, I I I, I love them. They're great performers. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, the curtain call was. Them, but they destroyed kayfabe. You fucking ruined wrestling. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know how to say it. You, 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 you took what wrestling was and you just made it. And that's what sports fucking entertainment now. And that's the thing is that if kayfabe never died, which it would have eventually, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Because guess what? It, people just get smarter and smarter. Oh, 100 percent. Um. Yeah. That's that's the thing is that. If it if it wasn't for kayfabe dying, it wouldn't be sports entertainment. It would still be professional wrestling, and it would be taken more seriously. Well, and I think the only the only real response you can give to that as a wrestler and to give back to the business itself is um, to ride the line between kayfabe and reality. You know, because everybody nowadays knows that you know. Every, everybody knows about kayfabe in some sort of way, or they know, like you said, some of the levels of kayfabe. I think the best way you can still work the fans is to make them debate on whether something is kayfabe or not. You could. And that, 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 that's one of the ways I look to do it is, you know, like, holy shit, is what he's saying? Does he mean that? Or is that that's very like, smart, all part Adam. of the character? It's very smart because here's the thing is that everybody has smart up to the point where they know that this is fake. So let's do reverse psychology on it. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I totally agree with that. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's actually a really good point. You to do it. That's the way to do it. But here's the thing is that I pay my respect to wrestling by following what I was trained to do, and that is what I believe is the right way. And I stick to that. I don't let any promoter, I don't let anybody talk me out of it. Because the thing is, is that if I do my part, I know somebody or some people, some group, some company is going to respect my work. And that's where I will be known. And that's just, that's my opinion. I just think that if you respect wrestling enough, you should pay your dues and you should do it the right way. Yeah. And it's not easy. Yep. <laughs> it's not easy. That's why I say this isn't a hobby. It's not easy. No, if you're going to do something like this and you want to make it somewhere, this better be your whole, this better be your whole damn life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, one hundred and ten percent. And you know what, people yep. that it is their whole life respect the business more. Yes. And that's, what, that's all I can ask for. I'm telling you, man. You will look at if you when you understand wrestling to the point where me and John have to where we've experienced it, we've learned the ins and outs. Wrestling just becomes a whole lot different. You respect different things. Yeah. And the thing is, is that it's not like oh shit, those. Are, it was a devastating move. Oh my god, he just did that ridiculous spot. It's more like, wow, that was a really clean power slam. Or wow, look at how look at how he fed up for that, or or look at right. selling that. That's that's the difference mm-hmm. between marks and professional wrestlers, is that they go, oh shit, they look like that hurt, dude. Damn, that was really good. See, no, 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 no. You go, dude. That was that was nice. Good for him. Cool. End of it. Yep. Yeah, and wrestling is such a respect-based business. Like, in any level, um, I can use MEBW as a uh, metaphor. Um, when you go from the lower card to the mid card, like, you need to be able to check your ego at the door and always be able to open, or always be open to learning new things. And, you know, having that respect for the guys that are higher up on the card and even just your guys that are lower on the card, too. Um, always be respectful. And that's that's how you get places is being respectful. That's exactly and how you get places because you disrespect somebody in this thing. business that's a hierarchy and you will never see the light of wrestling again. Here's you're right. Fucked. Yeah. Here's a golden rule. This yeah, is a golden you're fucked. Rule. It doesn't like this... matter if somebody is teaching you something that you already know, you always say thank you. Yes. Because there have been countless times where I've gone mm-hmm. to a show, um, and while we're just messing around in the ring before the show, uh, someone that is has obviously been in the business 
is like trying to show me how to tweak something. And I always, and I mean, even if I don't agree with it, I you still say thank you. Like, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Just the fact that someone like that's shown, that means that, you know, they're really. You don't know who has power at the end of the day. Exactly. Because here's the thing is that this business has a lot of politics. Yep. As much and as it sucks. Wrestlers will screw you over more than anybody yep. else. Yep. I can promise you that. Oh, yeah. They'll do it in a heartbeat. They don't give a shit about you. Yep. And it is, it is a cutthroat business. Yep. It's, um, it's, and, and, and I know I say that from a perspective that doesn't really understand it because I haven't been there yet. But I do say it as a perspective of, of someone who studies it and someone who does try and, and learn these things early so that you know, I don't make some of those mistakes of not thanking the promoter or not shaking their hand making eye contact all these all these very important things um i just try and learn it early because the the truth of the matter is it training starts soon for me i can't reveal because the podcast going out to everyone i can't reveal when that is but training starts very soon and i've got to you know pre literally prepare myself for this and and the 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 prefix of pre is really important to me. It's really, before you get there, what are the things you already want to have down so that when you get there, you don't make those mistakes. You make different mistakes that you can learn from instead. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's some solid advice. Uh, unfortunately, for the sake of our editor, that must be the all of the talks for today. Um, but we will definitely continue talking after the show. Uh, but that is all for the Jersey Boys podcast experience for the day. Some wise words to end on. Uh, I have been Senor Bowers. I have been, been Jack Sosa. Sosa. I've, I've been Matt Dunderhead. I'm Divine Dak Ryan. <laughs> the man who must. Oh, wait, what about John? The man Johnny who must. Johnny Blade. <laughs> 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 pop, big pop. <laughs> and oh, Tyler yeah. Green with Rob and, and then Tyler Green. Yeah, Tyler <laughs> Green with Rob Sack. Sack. He's like a big boy, a big boy thing. So.